lecture 9 part 2 so in part 1 we have started discussing signal flow graph and we have discussed that path and forward path so today we will see some more terminologies which are used in signal flow graph so one is that loop a loop is a path that originates and terminates on the same node and along which no other node is encountered more than once so loop a loop is a path is a path that originates and terminates on the same node and along which no other node is encountered more than once. So this is that uh, definition of loop. So let us just uh, draw the signal flow graph that we have done in previous part, part one. So here we have that node Y1, Y2, Y3, Y4 and Y5. So here again you can take that this is Y5 output node and this is input node. This one is input node. And the signal flow graph that we have considered in part one, I am drawing it again. So whenever you will be drawing that signal flow graph, should not forget to mention that arrow because that arrow indicates that the flow of signal and there is one path here so that is a to five that branch gain a three four a24 this is that self loop and a23 a32 and a12 so this signal flow graph already we have discussed in detail in part 1 so now here let us see how many loops are here so one loop is you can see here that is y1 uh, y2 y3 and y2 so this is one loop that is y2 y3 and y2 we have another loop that is y3 y4 and y3 we have another loop here that is y3 y4 y3 then here there is another loop so we can write that y4 y4 is there any other loop no so in this case we have 
only uh, three loops yes we can have another loop uh, that is say this y2 y4 y3 and again y2 that is y2 y4 y3 and y2 so this is actually the definition of the loop the loop is a path that originates and that originates and terminates on the same node here you can see that it originates uh, from y2 and terminates at y2 the same thing happens for other cases other loops as well and no other node no other node is encountered more than once so that is that important because if you if you consider that y2 that y2 y3 y4 y3 and y2 so this is not a loop because you can see here that y3 is encountered more than once so these are the four loops exist in this particular signal flow graph so let us see the other definitions what is path gain we have seen what is path so now the path gain is the product the product of the branch gains of the branch gains so here you can see so these all are the branch gains a24 a34 a23 these all are the branch gains so the product of the branch gains encounter in traversing a path a path is called the path gain so if we just consider a path in this particular example suppose we are considering a path say y1 to y2 then y3 y4 y5 so that is y1 here you can see that this is y1 to y2 then y3 then y4 and y5 so this is that path so then how many branch gains are there so this is one branch gain this one and that one and here i think there is one branch gain y4 to 5 that is a4 to 5 here a4 to 5 so then what would be the branch gain path gain so path gain is the product of branch gains so that is a12 here and then a23 here a23 then a34 a34 and a45 so that means the product of the branch gains encountered in traversing a path is called the path gain so whenever you have a signal flow graph you just first identify which one is that path and then just take the product of branch gains so it gives you the path gain now what is non touching loops non touching loops two loops of a signal flow graph are non touching if they do not share a common node of a signal flow graph abbreviated as sfg are non touching
if they do not share a common node. So let us see in this particular example, is there any non-touching loops or not? We can see here that one loop is one loop is say this loop. So this is that loop. This is that loop that is Y2, Y3 and Y2. And here there is a loop. So you can see that this particular loop and that but this loop, these two loops, they do not have any common node. So then we can see that in this particular example, we have a pair of non-touching loops. So that is Y2, Y3, Y2. So this is one loop and another loop that is the self loop Y4. So these are the two loops which are actually non-touching loops. So in signal flow graph, we'll be using these terminologies. So one is that path, then forward path, then that loop, path gain, and non-touching loops. Whenever we solve some problems in signal flow graph, we perform some signal flow graph algebra. So these are very simple. So let us see what is that signal flow graph algebra that SFG algebra. These all are very simple. Just if you apply your common sense and if you just apply that signal flow graph terminologies and ideas, then you can easily find out what are the relations uh, must hold applying that signal flow graph algebra. So let us see if we have if you have a node like this and suppose there are many branches so there are many branches so these all are the nodes there are many branches so nodes are here this node is y1 then y2 y3 y4 y5 y6 and y7 so you need to put that arrowhead because that signal is flowing like this suppose so here we just put the flow of signal in reverse direction this one and we need to mention that branch gain as well which is also very important whenever you will be drawing that signal flow graph do not forget to write that branch gain that is a41 a51 a16 say a17 a21 and a31 so here you can see that what is y1 that thing already we have seen at the very beginning that is y1 equal to a21 so this signal is coming like this that is a21 into y2 then a31 a31 into y3 then a41 a41 into y4 plus a51 into y5 so as in those two branches signals are going out so basically we should not consider that one in this particular algebraic equation then we have another algebraic equation that is y6 so y6 equal to a16 y1 and y7 equal to 
a one seven y one. So you can see here these three algebraic equations represent this signal program, or in other way, from this signal program, you can have these three algebraic equation. So now the second one is if you have a signal flow graph like this so in between two nodes if you have multiple branches suppose you have three branches and a b and c so this can be represented as this is y1 this is y2 and here that would be a plus b plus c which is straightforward if you just write here that y2 would be equal to a y1 plus b y1 plus c y1 from there easily you can find what would be that effective branch gain similarly if you have say four nodes like y1 y2 y3 and y4 and suppose you have a12 a23 and a34 signal is flowing like this so then in this case you can see here that from y1 to y4 y4 and the effective branch gain or you can say that from y1 to y4 this is a path so basically the path gain would be a1 to a23 a34 so these are actually the signal flow graph algebra whenever you will be solving some problem or if you want to find that transfer function from signal flow graph will be using these algebras to simplify that signal flow graph. So now we'll be discussing an important result of signal flow graph, which is called that Mason gain formula. So this Mason gain formula is used to find the transfer function from a signal flow graph. So this is very, this is a very important result in control systems, linear control systems. So let us, start discussing that Mason gain, Mason's gain formula. So Mason's gain formula. So this formula is used to find the transfer function from signal flow graph in between any two nodes. So this Messengen formula states that if you have one output node that is y out and if you have one input node so the gain between the input node to output node from input node to output node is summation of mk delta k by delta where k equal to 1 to n. So now we will be discussing in detail that what is this m, what is this mk delta k and delta and what is n. So n is the total number of forward paths. N is the total number of total number of for so already we have seen what is for our paths total number of for our paths between y in 
and y out so that means in signal flow graph if we are interested in to find what is the gain from y in to y out so first we need to identify how many forward paths are there in between y in and y out so n is the total number of forward paths between y in and y out so now what is mk so mk is gain of the kth forward path so we can see it here as k is from 1 to n and n is the number of forward paths so mk is the gain of the kth forward path now what is delta this delta so delta is equal to 1 minus sum of the gain sum of the gains of all individual loops plus again bracket sum of the products of gains of all possible combinations of two non-touching loops already we have seen what is the definition of non-touching loops then minus you can see here the sign minus then plus then minus again the same thing that means the sum of the products of gains of all possible combination of three non-touching loops and so on so then again sum of the products of gains of all possible combinations of four non-touching loops and so on so this is actually delta so here you should note down that the symbol is coming like minus then plus then minus again plus then minus like that and here you can see that sum of the gains of all individual loops then the next one is two non-touching loops the third one is three non-touching loops then four non-touching loops like that then what is delta k because here you can see that there is one term which is delta k so delta k delta k is the delta that means this delta for that part of the signal flow graph that is non-touching with the kth forward path. I think this particular Massengen formula would be clear whenever we see one example. So let us first see that example. Then if you have any doubt, I will be discussing it again. So let us take one example first. So first draw that signal flow graph. So there are 
seven nodes that is y1 y2 y3 y4 y5 y6 and y7 so seven nodes and we have the branch from y1 to y2 with gain one then another branch here that gain is g1 so here you can see this g1 is actually the transfer function you have another gain that is minus h1 so now actually i am replacing the gain with the transfer function that means from node y3 to y4 the transfer function is g2 and as you know we have already pointed out that those nodes are basically the variables so now from y4 to y5 the branch gain is g3 and there is one feedback so this is h2 and here you have another gain that is g4 and here the gain is one so in y6 there is one self loop with branch gain minus h4 and from y3 to y6 from y3 to y6 there is a branch with that gain z5 and from y5 to y2 from y5 to y2 we have one feedback path with gain minus h3 so we have taken one example just arbitrarily we have taken one example and this is that signal flow graph now our objective is to find what is the transfer function using Mason's gain formula. So as we have seen already that in Mason's gain formula, if you just look at that Mason gain formula, so we need to find how many horror paths are there. So that is our first objective. How many horror paths are there? So let us see the horror paths. Horror paths. So one horror path is Y1 to Y2 to Y3 to Y4 to Y5 to Y6 to y7 so this is one horror path that is y1 to y2 to y3 y4 y5 y6 y7 we have another horror path that is y1 to y2 to y3 so that is y1 to y2 y3 to y6 you can see here you can also follow this path y6 to y7 that means from input to output so we have another forward path that is y1 to y2 to y3 to y6 to y7 do you have any other forward path no so what is the forward path gain? So the gain is forward path gain. So for this first forward path, you can see here 1 into G1 into G2, G3, G4. So that is G1, G2, G3, G4. So if we say that this is first forward path, the gain is this one. And for second forward path, we have that gain 1 into G1 
into G5 into 1. So only G1 into G5. So in this case, that gain is G1 into G5. So now, if you look at the Mason gains formula, so the Mason gains formula says that summation of k to n. So here in this particular example, n equal to 2 because you can see here you have only two forward paths. So the Mason gain formula says that this n and summation of k 1 to 2 because you have two forward paths. m k delta k by delta. So if we expand it, it would be m1 delta 1 plus m2 delta 2 divided by delta. So now let us see what is m1. So if you look at the definition here, so mk that is m1 is the gain of the kth forward path. That means m1 would be the gain of the first forward path. So the first forward path gain is here. So we can write that this is G1, G2, G3, G4 into delta 1. And what is the gain of the second forward path? That is G1, G5 into delta 2 divided by this delta. So now, just look at what is delta 1. So delta 1 here, delta 1, the delta for that part of the signal flow graph that is non-touching with the kth forward path. That is non-touching. Or we can, okay, so first we do that delta, then we'll be coming back delta 1 and delta 2. So let us see what is delta. So delta equal to 1 minus, so let us see, first you write that delta equal to 1 minus sum of the gains of all individual loops. So how many loops are here? Here you can see this is one loop. Now this is another loop. Then we have another loop here. Then three loops. We have another loop here. So four loops and is there any other loops? So we have four loops. So now if we write that sum of the, this is sum of the gains of all individual loops. So if we look at the loop one, so suppose this, this loop, particularly this loop, so the gain is minus G1 H1. So here we'll be writing minus G1 H1. So let us see the other loop. So this one. So that is G3 into minus H2. So that means G3 minus H2. So then we have this bigger loop, this, this bigger one. So that is G1, G2, G3 minus H3. So that is G1, G2, G3, then H3. So minus sign I have taken here. And we have another individual loop that is this one. So that is minus H4. So then we have done the first part. This part is done. So now let us see this part. Sum of the products of gains of all possible combinations of two non-touching loops. 
So here we have already seen there are four loops. So now we can see here that this loop, that loop, and this loop, they are actually non-touching loops. But if you look at the bigger loop, so basically this loop and that loop, they are inside this loop, so they are not non-touching. But if you look at this bigger loop and this small loop, cell loop, they are non-touching. So let us see how many combinations we can have. So the first one is, so just take this one and that one. So then what you have? G1 minus H1, then G3 minus H2. So minus minus plus. So that means you have, you have, you can see the formula here. That is plus. So I write this plus, then product of two non-touching loops. So that is G1, H1, G3, H2. So then we have another combination say this this loop and that loop so that means g1 minus h1 minus h4 so that means g1 h1 h4 so we have g1 h1 h4 and then again there is another combination this loop and that loop so here g3 minus h2 minus h4 so that means g3 h2 h4 so that is G3, H2, H4. Now there is one another combination. That means this bigger loop, this bigger loop and this loop. So here you can see that G1, G2, G3, minus H3, minus H4. So that is G1, G2, G3, H3, and H4. So no more combination is available here. So that means this part is done. So now the third one, that means the sign is minus. So the sign is minus here. We can write it here with different colors, a minus. Then it would be the product of some of the products of three non-touching loops. So here I can see that means this is one loop, this is another loop, this is one of the another loop. So three loops are actually non-touching. What is the product? Product is G1 minus H1, G3 minus H2 minus H4. So that means only one term is there, which is minus, minus, plus, then one minus, remains so that means here you can see that minus g1 h1 g3 h2 h4 so as there are only four loops and we cannot have four non-touching loops so that means we can stop here because only you can have three non-touching loops in this particular signal flow graph. You do not have four non-touching loops. So delta ends here. So this is actually that expression for delta. So now what is delta one? So delta one is here you can see delta one. That means is there any loop? You can see it here. So delta one corresponding to first forward path. So the delta for that part of the signal flow graph, which is non-touching, which is non-touching with the first forward path. But as the first forward path is this one, so this one is the first forward path. You can see that this particular loop, this particular loop, this loop, and that loop, all four loops are touched with this forward path. So that means delta k equal to only one only one because the other terms does not exist so here delta one equal to one now let us see what is delta two so the second forward path if you look at here the second forward path is this one so the second forward path is this one that means 
here only there is one loop which is non touching with the first forward path transfer function so that means here the delta would be that means this is the delta the delta for that part of the signal flow graph so that means this is that signal flow graph and you can see here this is the part which is non touching with the kth forward path k here actually k equal to 2 so that means this is the second forward path and only this part of the signal flow graph is non touching with this forward path so there is only one loop this is that loop and its gain is g3 into minus h2 so here you can see the delta 2 would be equal to 1 minus that is g3 into minus h2 so that is 1 plus g3 h2 so this is delta 2 so now what is the mason gains from y in to y out so we can write it here the mason gains that m is equal to that uh, this one so that is g1 g2 g3 g4 the first forward path delta 1 equal to 1 and then g2 sorry that is g1 g1 g5 into delta 2 so delta 2 we get that is 1 plus g3 h2 that is in numerator and in denominator you have the delta so what is the delta you get this one that is 1 plus g1 h1 plus g3 h2 plus g1 g2 g3 h3 plus h4 and then you have g1 h1 g3 h2 plus g1 h1 h4 g3 h2 h4 plus g1 g2 g3 h3 h4 plus g1 h1 g3 h2 h4 so this is actually the transfer function this is the transfer function from this particular node to this node that means from input to output so whenever a signal flow graph is given to you applying mason gains formula you can find the transfer function and the beauty of this particular formula is you can see without writing any algebraic equation just by identifying forward path and loops and non touching loops we can write directly the transfer function so now another important thing is if i ask you what would be the transfer function from y1 to y2 suppose this is given and you need to find what is the transfer function from y1 to y2 so as we have already discussed that means you can make any node if it is not an input node so you can make that node as output node so i am making this node as output node so this is that output node so now our objective is to find what is the transfer function from y1 to y2 so if we apply the mason gains formula what we need to find first we need to identify what is the forward path so here actually only one forward path is there so this is that forward path that is y1 y2 y2 and what is that gain forward path gain 
So forward path gain is here one because this is also one. So now you can directly apply the Mason gains formula to find the transfer function. And here another important thing you can see that if you are asked to find what is the transfer function from y2 to y7. So that means if I choose any node inside that signal flow graph, suppose if I choose this node and if I ask you what is the transfer function from y3 to y7, can you find it using Mason gains formula? So there is a technique of finding transfer function from any node inside that signal flow graph to the output node. So here you can see that this particular transfer function you get that is y7 by y1. So here you can see this is that signal flow graph y1 is here and this is that y7. So this thing already you get. So now your objective is find find y7 by y2. So you need to find the transfer function from y2 to y7. So here you have that y2 and here you have y7. And you can notice here this y2 is not actually that input node. It is a node inside that signal flow graph. So here easily you can find that y7 to y2 is nothing but you can write that y7 by y1 then again y2 by y1 so then you can see that this is actually from input node to output node and here again you can write that this is input to another output node because you can make this y2 as output node as i have done it so then let us find what is y1 to y2 so let us first find what is the transfer function from y1 to y2 so now you have seen that that this is that forward path so this this one is that forward path. This is that forward path and its gain is one. So now what would be the delta? So delta remains same. The reason is here you can see that if you see the Mason gains formula, if you see the Mason gains formula, so this delta remains same for a given signal program. So in this particular case, this signal flow graph remains same so delta remains same only thing is in the numerator part as there is only one forward path but this is the rest of the portion of the signal flow graph here you can see which is actually non-touching with this forward path so in this particular part you, you can see that there are two loops this is one loop and this is another loop so two loops are there and again they are non-touching loops so we can find what is the delta one in the numerator let us see what is that so here y2 the forward path gain is one so now what is the delta in the numerator first one minus because will be again applying this particular formula so one minus sum of all individual loops so here how many individual loops are there so two loops are there this is one loop and this is another loop so sum of so here the gain is minus g3 h2 and here gain is minus h4 so that means here minus g3 h2 and here you have h4 and then 
if you see the third term, so this one, so that means this is minus and no, sorry, so third terms is this one. So this is plus and you have two non-touching loops. Here you can see that two non-touching loops. So plus, plus this plus into two non-touching loops here in this particular signal flow graph, you can see this is one loop and this is another loop which are actually non-touching loop. What is that product? Product is G3 into minus H2 into minus H4. So that is G3, G3, H2, H4. So there is no three non-touching loops. So that means delta ends here. And then you can see the same delta will be here because you have that same signal flow graph. So that means y2 by y1 is equal to 1 plus h4 plus g3 h2 plus g3 h2 h4 divided by this delta. So now easily we can find what is y7 by y2. So here you can write it here that y7 by y2 equal to y7 by y1 divided by y2 by y1. And what is y7 by y1? So here you can see that this is that numerator and in the denominator, so this is equal to delta. And here also the same delta is here. So basically your y7 by y2 is this particular this particular term divided by this particular term because delta will be cancelled out so that means you have here g1 g2 g3 g4 plus g1 g5 1 plus g3 h2 so this one is this thing and you have in the denominator 1 plus h4 plus g3 h2 plus g3 h2 h4 so this is the method you need to follow for finding transfer function using uh, using Mason Gens formula, whenever you have some other, if you, if you are asked to find transfer function from any node inside the signal flow graph to say output. So today, what we have seen, so we have actually discussed some uh, terminologies that is that loop and then path gain, non-touching loops. And we have seen that signal flow algebra. And then we have discussed in detail that Mason Gens formula. And we have uh, understood the Mason Gens formula uh, by one example. And this is that signal flow graph. And uh, here we have again discussed that means if you are asked to find the transfer function from any node inside that signal flow graph to output node, how to find the transfer function. So this is that method you need to follow. So this is that method you need to follow. Thank you.